previous videos we have seen how we can develop a rainfall on of model using artificial neural networks where we have used the data of uh, uh, the rainfall data from rain gauges to develop a good model so it's not that uh, rainfall data from rain gauges is available all the time and in all the locations so we need another uh, data source which we can reliably use for developing a model or understanding the rainfall pattern in an area so in this video we will see what are the different types of rainfall data sets the data sets which are generally in use which are found to be good for application we will see those types and see what are the resolutions and what are their availabilities so let's get into it so first rainfall data set so as i have mentioned earlier rainfall is measured using rain gauges all around the world these rain gauges uh, either measure the rainfall manually that means a person goes every day to the rain gauge in the morning at seven o'clock and sees what is the level of water in it to determine the amount of rainfall in the area or it is automatically measuring and sending the signals so one of the example is a simple uh, rain gauge where you have graduations on the beaker or whatever the metal instrument which it which might be and it measures the amount of rainfall in a particular duration like 24 hours and you report it saying this is the amount of precipitation or rainfall actually in the area the number of rain gauges present in an area let's assume if you have a 10 kilometer area so 10 kilometer square so based on the number of rain gauges you have in that area you can determine what is the rainfall pattern which area is getting how much rainfall so that you can develop a good model or do any rainfall analysis also one of the issue with the rain gauges is their locations depend upon the terrain there are certain rules which they have to follow like uh, there should not be any high structure up to 30 meters to 100 meters before the rain gauge because it obstructs the natural uh, rain falling in that area and it gives a faulty measurements so there are several rules like that and also accessibility uh, to the rain gauge also uh, determines whether how many rain gauges are in an area for example if they it is a mountainous area it is not possible to have lot of rain gauges because of lot very less uh, 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 accessibility is to that area hence the amount of precipitation in that regions is not correctly monitored and also precipitation is not uniform around the world so also the placement of rain gauges their numbers also determine in the country where the rainfall is present or not also another big issue which everyone faces is even though if there are rain gauges it's not like uh, they work all the time correctly and give you accurate information right there is an always an issue of error component in it hence seeing this uh, issue of rain gauges uh, their data availability and its accuracy depends on country to country so to do any work related to water or to take up for example to model a flood occurrence of flood or to see the availability of uh, water resource in that area based upon the precipitation it is important to have a good data so it was a necessity to have a uh, another viable data so that you can monitor the water resources in an area so with increase in remote sensing satellite precipitation products have been determined as a viable option for understanding this variations in water resources and to do any analysis so there are different types of satellite precipitation products available 
few of them which are quite known to everyone are Persian, TRMM, GPM, GPM My Merge, Trips. So we'll talk about in a very brief what these uh, products are, what are the organizations which are handling it and other details. So if we see Persian data set, the Persian in the abbreviation it determines precipitation estimation for remotely sensed information using artificial neural networks. So this data set is developed based upon the concept of uh, machine learning using artificial neural networks from satellite data. This is uh, under the control or we can say the organization which takes care is Center for Hydrometeorological and Remote Sensing at University of California. So how does this data work? How does this satellite uh, is able to pick up the precipitation? This satellite uses infrared radiation in through which it takes imaginary images of the clouds and based on that it uses a very complex algorithm to determine how much rainfall is uh, uh, could be occurring because it cannot see that rain is falling on the ground etc right it just sees the imagery from above and it based upon its uh, complex algorithm it calculates how much precipitation is occurring in an area based upon the cloud cover and other parameters. So this data is available for more than 30 years from 2000 to present minimum is available and it is uh, available in various temporal resolutions like 1 hour, 3 hour, 6 monthly, yearly scales for the whole world and it's a freely available data and it's available in a gridded format of 0.25 by 0.25 degree pixels. So when we come to TRMM data, TRMM refers to Tropical Rainfall Measuring Machine. It is under the control of NASA and JAXA which is Japan Aerospace Organization. This was uh, generally commissioned for understanding uh, media and seeing medium and uh, high rainfall data sets to be able to capture them and it is also having an accuracy uh, or temporal uh, spatial uh, resolution of 0.25 by 0.25 but in 2019 it was decommissioned and uh, the data sets which we will talk further in the videos are the continuation of TRMM. This data is generally available in a CDF format in a temporary resolution of tele. So the next data set is GPM. Global Precipitation Measurement Mission which is uh, in turns related to the TRMM data set as well because it is again uh, under the control of NASA and JAXA along with heavy and medium rainfalls which uh, TRMM was able to capture. This was equipped to capture light rainfall as well as falling snow. So this data set was as seen as a uh, what can we say the attachment to TRMM. So in order to get a better uh, data set after the TRMM has been discontinued. Uh, GPM iMerge has emerged, which use the data of TRMM as well as its own uh, other uh, parameters to be able to produce a good satellite precipitation products. So it generally represents it uses multi satellite data sets to be able to use that data and combine it with GPM data sets to get a good uh, rainfall estimate or entire the world. So what does this do? This How does it uh, get the data? It estimates the data based upon the past information of the RMM satellite from 2000 to 2015 and also the data set which GPM has uh, got from 2014 to present it uses these different satellite data sets to be able to get compound data set which has a good accuracy in uh, observing the amount of precipitation occurring. So this is what is GPM iMERGE data set which has again the same resolution as uh, GPM as well as TRMM data set as they are of the same category. 
the final one is chrips data set chrips generally stands for climate hazard group infrared precipitation with station data it's like it takes the data from the satellite and it compares with the station data to get a good uh, precipitation data for us so this data is from 1981 to near present and uh, it has actually two spatial resolutions 0.25 as well as 0.05 uh, and this is funded from nasa nova and other sources the main aim was to get maps of this data so that uh, you are able to understand the rainfall patterns maybe also predict the drought conditions in an area these are the general uh, satellite data sets which are commonly used for analysis in the hydrological domain and all the data sets mentioned are open sourced it means they are freely available to download uh, for anywhere in the world although these are all uh, uh, satellite precipitation data sets they use different type of algorithms to get the data hence their accuracy compared to the station data varies from one to another so in the next video we will see how we can download the satellite data sets from which websites we can download and how to download uh, and also in the further video we will see how we can compare this satellite precipitation data sets to the station data so that we can understand which data is good for use this is the basic info about different precipitation data sets i hope you understood the different types of data sets available in the next video we will see how we can download the data set that is it for this video if you have not uh, seen the previous videos regarding various hydrological models and also writing codes in matlab you can uh, check the previous videos also if you like the content developed in this channel give it a like and subscribe and also share it with people for whom it can be useful